Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, and this is our continuing countdown of the greatest college football teams of all time. There were 25 great teams on this list, and now we've reached the top 10. So let's start this video off the right way with number 10 and see who ranks as the 10th best team on our list in college football history. The 1966 Notre Dame Fighting Irish. The reason why Notre Dame and Michigan State played the game of the century at the time was because both teams were very dominant. But when you look at this Notre Dame team from 66, go look at their defense. You won't find anybody that dominated more opponents than that team right there for the Fighting Irish. The 66 Fighting Irish team had a very impressive season, posting six defensive shutouts, 12 All-Americans, and three future first-round picks. Defensive end Allen Page guards Paul Seiler and Thomas Regner, and linebacker Jim Lynch led a defense that shut out both number 10 Oklahoma and number 10 USC on the road. The 1968 Ohio State Buckeyes. It's tough to pick just one Ohio State team to be on this list, especially those that were under Woody Hayes. But when you look at this 68 team and what he was able to do, this guy took a team that wasn't as talented and went undefeated en route to a national championship. Running back Jim Otis led a punishing running game that battered opponents all season long. While on the defensive side of the ball, Jack Tatum was putting the fear of God in wide receivers going across the middle. The highlights of the season, aside from a comeback victory versus number two USC in the Rose Bowl, was a 50 to 14 drubbing of their rival Michigan in Columbus. The 1959 Syracuse Orange. I can sum up the 59 season for Syracuse in only two words, Ernie Davis. Opponents found it tough to slow down the sophomore sensation Ernie Davis who had over 600 yards rushing and 7 yards of carry, but it wasn't all on Davis. The defense of the Orange was the best in the country, pitching 5 defensive shutouts and also stepping up in a big way versus number 7 Penn State on the road. Now remember, this team started out the season unranked and they rode the Elmira Express all the way to the Cotton Bowl in a victory over Texas. The 1993 Florida State Seminoles. This was a very talented football team in Florida State, quite honestly. When you look at the offensive firepower they had in the backfield with Warwick Dunn, William Floyd, Charlie Ward won the Heisman Trophy, but their defense with Derrick Brooks and company, this is why they're on this list. This is a very good ball club. I think you could line up this team today and he will still win at least 10 games. While the Florida State fast break offense was on display all year long with Heisman Trophy winning quarterback Charlie Ward, it was the dominating Seminole defense that was also a joy to watch. The linebacking core of Ken Alexander, Sam Coward, and Derek Brooks, along with a star set of defensive lineup Derek Alexander and Renard Wilson, kept offenses in check all year long. The only blemish on their record came on a last second loss on the road to Notre Dame. The 1975 Oklahoma Sooners. The reason why I chose the 75 Oklahoma team as opposed to the 74 team that also won a national title is that this 75 team played a way tougher schedule this time around when 11 and one in route to Barry Switzer's second national championship. Perseverance, adversity, and talent aptly describes the 75 Sooners as they knocked off seven ranked opponents, shutting down Tony Dorsett and Pitt Blowing out number two Nebraska in the process, head coach Barry Switzer and his wishbone offense was able to overcome a November loss to Kansas 23-3 to still be in contention for a title. Two outstanding All-Americans running back Joe Washington and defensive lineman Leroy Selman led a defensive unit that was able to hold an explosive Michigan team to under seven points in the Orange Bowl. The 1971 Nebraska Cornhuskers. Nebraska was just a dominant ball club. They won the game of the century 
twice in one season because they had to play Alabama and they also had to play Oklahoma. And when you have Johnny Rogers and we all know about that punt return, that made 71 a very special year for the Cornhuskers. Quarterback Jerry Taggy had an impressive campaign throwing the football 17 touchdowns and it makes it easy when you have one of the more outstanding players in the country and wingback Johnny Rogers catching 11 of them. When you look at that defense, they were stout led by Outland Trophy defensive tackle Rich Glover that dominated a number two ranked Alabama in the Orange Bowl 38 to 6. Their schedule was well balanced. They beat Oregon who had Bobby Moore. You may know him as Amara Rashad and they had three games on the road, consecutive on the road, in which they were able to come away victorious. The 1947 Michigan Wolverines. The only time you can put Michigan and Ohio State in the same sentence is when you're talking about how many dominant teams they had over the course of their history. And that Michigan team in 1947, no one was able to dominate more so than the Wolverines. Arguably the best team in school history, the 47 Wolverines were not only excellent on both offense and defense, but they were very innovative in the process. The Wolverines were credited with being the first team to ever use players specifically on one side of the football. Plus, that single wing offense gave defenses fits as they racked up over 390 points over the course of the season. The 2001 Miami Hurricanes. Anytime the question comes up, can a college team ever beat a pro team? You get a resounding no. But the one time that makes you think and question, well, you know, I don't, I don't know. You're thinking about that 01 Miami squad, which was essentially the 33rd NFL franchise. When you have a team coming into the season ticked off from the year before, they felt as though they should have played Oklahoma for the national championship instead of Florida State, plus a team with all this talent. You're going to get 17 future first round draft picks in a team that was up 34 to nothing at halftime versus Nebraska that year in the bowl game. This was by far one of the more dominant teams in college football history. The 1956 Oklahoma Sooners. When you talk about domination, you have to look at this Oklahoma team from 1956. I mean, Bud Wilkerson put together, quite honestly, one of the best football teams ever assembled. What's most impressive about the 56 Sooners is that they only gave up four touchdowns all season long. On offense, running back Tommy McDonald was the Reggie Bush of his era, a multifaceted, talented athlete that could beat you in any way possible. Oklahoma averaged 47 points a game and was in the middle of their 47 consecutive game winning streak that ended the following season in the bowl game. The 1995 Nebraska Cornhuskers. There's a reason why Nebraska has two squads on this roster. The 71 team was outstanding, like I said before, won both games of the century in the same year. But this 95 team, when you look at Nebraska and what they were able to do from 94 to 95, two things you already knew. One, you're going to start the game down 28 nothing, and two, you weren't going to win that game. This was by far the most dominating team I've ever seen in college football history. When you look at the 95 Nebraska Cornhuskers, you look at quarterback Tommy Frazier. I would take him on my team over anybody in college football history. He was a tremendous leader. This team had a lot of speed, a lot of talent, and they played with power and aggressiveness and a swagger that you don't see from teams this day and age. They beat four teams in the top 10 on an average score of 49 to 18, and their average margin of victory was by 38 points. By far, the best, the most talented, the most dominant team in college football history. And that has earned the 1995 Nebraska Cornhuskers coached by Tom Osborne the title of the greatest college football team of all time.